Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing something that's going to be not only a great video for you guys to listen and learn from, but also it's going to be a resource for the entire Age of Empires 2 community so that every time someone has any trouble down the line, be it one month, one year from now, they can come back to this video, they can be referred to it, and they can get their answer here. This topic is super important because it's really confusing. Like Even for pro players, we mess it up sometimes until it's explained to us. But basically, the idea of this video is to explain how to upgrade every single unique unit. And now when it comes to something like an archer it's very obvious how to upgrade it from the blacksmith when it comes to something like a knight it's very obvious how to upgrade it from the blacksmith and like the archer there's some university upgrades to get as well it's rather obvious and it's easy to learn but when it comes to unique units it is super challenging so i'm going to go through every single civilization every single unique unit and explain how to upgrade it so you guys can play optimally in your games and not be confused out there on your own games so starting things off we're going to go in order alphabetically with the armenians armenians have the composite bowman and that is going to be an archer upgraded exactly like a regular archer it's going to be fletching straight through racer all the archer armor from the blacksmith and then ballistics and chemistry as usual then they've got the warrior priest the warrior priest is a secondary unique unit that is kind of like a hybrid between a monk and an infantry so it benefits from the attack and armor upgrades of infantry from the blacksmith but it also benefits from the upgrades from the monastery sanctity fervor for example giving them extra hp and giving them faster movement speed they also benefit from squires which gives faster movement speed to infantry so it is a hybrid between a monk and infantry and it behaves as such for its upgrades. Next, we got the Aztecs. The Jaguar Warrior is rather simple. It's upgraded exactly like a champion. So infantry armor and infantry attack from the blacksmith and then of course squires and arson from the barracks. Next, you got the Bengali Ratha. This is one of the most confusing ones to start things off here. The Ratha in ranged mode will benefit from archer upgrades. So it benefits from fletching through bracer for the attack and then ballistics and chemistry from the university. You don't have thumb rings Bengalis, but you have the other unique deck that makes them fire faster. That's cool. Now in their melee mode, they benefit from the attack upgrades of melee and cavalry, forging, iron casting, and blast furnace. In both forms, they benefit from archer armor. So padded archer armor, leather archer, Archer armor, ring archer armor, those three upgrades will benefit the Ratha no matter which form it's in, melee or ranged. Next up, we've got the Berbers. Berbers Camel Archer will be upgraded exactly like a cavalry archer. So you have Bloodlines Husbandry from the stable. You got Fletching through Bracer, through the uh, Blacksmith. You also got the Archer Armors through the Blacksmith. And then you also have Thumb Ring from the range. So exactly like a Cav Archer. For the Genitor, it's going to be upgraded like a hybrid between a Skirmisher and a Cav Archer in the sense that it benefits from Bracer upgrades. So Fletching through Bracer, Archer Armor as well from the Blacksmith. And it also benefits from Chemistry Ballistics. And it doesn't really benefit much from Thumb Ring similar to how a skirmisher doesn't benefit from thumb ring. So thumb ring normally makes the skirmisher just have a little bit more accuracy. It does not make the skirmisher fire faster. Same thing for the janitor. The janitor also benefits from husbandry and bloodlines. Next up, we got the Bohemians with the Hasset Wagon. The Hasset Wagon counts as a siege unit and not upgraded from the Blacksmith at all. Its upgrades come from the University in the form of Siege Engineers, giving it plus one range, and it has no other upgrades except the unique tech Wagonbrook Tactics, and of course, its own elite upgrade. Next up, we got the Britain Longbowman. Britain Longbowman is upgraded exactly like an Arblast. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Fletching through Bracer, of course, and then Archer Armor as well from the Blacksmith. You also get the Yeoman Unique Tech to give it extra range as well. So it's a pretty solid long range Archer. Next up, we got the Bulgarians with the Conic. Now, the Conic is upgraded in a very interesting fashion. It's upgraded both as a cavalry unit, and then when it's dismounted, it counts as an infantry unit. So, for the cavalry portion of it, it's the same thing as a knight, bloodlines, husbandry from the stable, and then attack upgrades and armor upgrades for cavalry from the blacksmith. And then when it goes down when it's a dismounted Conic, it benefits from upgrades like a militia would. So, for example, arson and squires from the barracks, and then from the blacksmith, you have the infantry armor and the infantry slash cavalry attack, foraging, iron casting, blast furnace. So it's a hybrid between an infantry unit and a cavalry unit, and it functions as such. Next, we've got the Burgundian Scustidier. This is upgraded exactly like you would upgrade a knight. Only difference is for the Burgundians, you don't get bloodlines, but everything else is pretty solid. And the Custodia has that charge attack built in, which is the only unique property. But as far as upgrading it, attack upgrades from the blacksmith and armor upgrades as well. I'll only mention here that when you get attack upgrades, if you see like the charge damage, it's usually like plus a lot of damage. If you get the attack upgrade, it's gonna add one damage to the charge. But then after the charge is done, you still keep the plus one damage from let's say forging. So it gives plus one to the charge and plus one to every single attack afterwards, making the attack upgrades pretty important for its regular combat, but not too important for its charge damage. Next up, we got the Burmese. Now we've got the Arambai, which is a super interesting unit. It 
benefits from archer armor from the blacksmith which you only get to one of with burmese it does not benefit from fletching through bracer at all that does not impact it and then if you go to the university it benefits from ballistics and in a recent patch they made it so the arambai also benefits from chemistry so chemistry will give arambai a plus one attack also in a recent patch arambai now benefit from parthian tactics so that's something you want to pick up with the burmese to give the arambai a little bit more armor Next up, we got the Byzantines. Now, Byzantines have the Cataphract, and this is upgraded exactly like a Knight would. You don't have Bloodlines of Byzantines, but everything else, Husbandry from the Stable, Attack and Armor Upgrades with Cavalry from the Blacksmith. And then you have the Unique Tech, Logistica, which gives Cataphracts Trample Damage. This makes it so if they hit one unit, all the units in a small radius around the Cataphract will take five damage, and this ignores armor. So that's what the Trample Damage means for Logistica Upgrade for the Cataphract. Next up, we got the Celts, and they've got the Wood Raider, which is an infantry upgraded exactly like a militia or a champion would. You don't get squires with Celts, which is worth noting, but you get that built in infantry moving faster bonus, so you don't actually don't need it. And that's built in straight to the Wood Raider, which is a fast moving infantry. And yeah, aside from that, just infantry armor and attack from the blacksmith and squire, uh, no squires, and arson from the barracks. Next up, we got the Chinese with the Chukunu. Uh, this is rather straightforward. Again, upgraded very heavily like Arbalest. Uh, one thing I will mention though is that the elite upgrade for the Chukunu is really not that great. I'd heavily suggest you prioritize Rocketry, which is the unique attack giving the Chukunu plus two attack. The elite makes it shoot one more arrow and gives it a bit of better stats, but the plus two attack straight up is just simply better in most cases. They do cost different things though, so I can understand why you'd get one over the other in some other cases. Next up, we got the Cumans. The Kipchak is upgraded like a Cavalry Archer exactly, so it benefits from Fletching and Bodkin Arrow, no Bracer for the Cumans, and then also benefits from all the armor upgrades from the Blacksmith, and then going to the Archer range, benefits from Thumb Ring and Parthen Tactics. So the Cuman Kipchak is very similar to a Cav Archer. Uh, it does not benefit from the Unique Tech Step Husbandry though, that only affects Cav Archers being made faster and not Kipchaks. Next, we've got the Dravidians. Oh, the lovely Dravidians. We've got the Arumi Swordsman, which is exactly like a militia. We upgrade it like an infantry unit. So arson, squires from the barracks, and then all uh, melee armor and melee attack from the blacksmith. Next up, we got the Ethiopians with the Chatel Warrior. Same thing. It's exactly like a militia upgrade. So I won't be repeating at this point if you guys will know how a militia is upgraded. But they also have a unique tech, Royal Hairs, Royal Hires, that makes them receive minus three damage from mounted units. And mounted units also includes Cav Archer. It also includes something like an Arambai. All mounted units deal three less damage to the Chatel Warrior. And that's a really nice bonus for that unit. Next up, we got the Franks. The Throwing Axeman is affected like a Militia as well, despite it being a ranged unit. So I have Infantry Attack and Infantry Armor from the Blacksmith. We got Squires and Arson from the Barracks. And the Throwing Axeman doesn't benefit from Ballistics, and not at all, nor Chemistry. So even though it's a ranged unit, technically, it is still considered a melee unit. And it also doesn't take bonus damage from Skirmishers. It counts as an Infantry 100%. The only other upgrade for the Axeman is the Unique Tech Bearded Axe, of course. Next up, we got the Georgians. The Manaspa is exactly like a knight. So armor of cavalry from the blacksmith and attack of infantry slash cavalry from the blacksmith as well. And that is pretty much for the Manaspa as far as upgrades goes. But unique attack as Nori cavalry from the Golden Crown does make Manaspa take less population. So it does count as a cavalry for that one as well. You also benefit from bloodlines and husbandry like a knight would from the stable. Next up, we got the Goths. The Husk Roll works exactly like a Militia. Goths lack the last armor upgrades. So you can't get that, but everything else like Militia it is going to be good. Also, it's worth noting that in general, when I say Militia, when I compare a unit to a Militia, I just mean everything that's not supplies and gambesons. Those are strictly for the Militia line. But everything else, like an infantry characteristic would have, if it works for the Militia, it will work for this unit that I'm referring to. So Husk Roll benefits from everything that Militia would benefit from, and it also benefits from Perfusion. Assuming you, you get Anarchy as well, that lets you create Husk Rolls from the barracks. If you get Perfusion, it also lets you create house scrolls 100% faster. So pretty strong tech there for the Goths, of course. Then we've got the Gurjaras. They've got a few unique units. So they've got the Chakram Thrower. The Chakram Thrower is going to behave very similar to how a Throwing Axeman was behaving. No ballistics, and it works like a militia. So infantry attack and armor from the blacksmith. Gurjaras do not get squires, so that's not an issue. But Arson, of course, will help it. And then the Shuramsha Rider is exactly like a light cavalry or a knight. Same upgrade path, same things apply to it. And uh, Camel Scout, the one thing I, I will mention for the Camel Scout is in the Dark Age, it doesn't have an attack bonus. It only gets the attack bonus in Feudal Age. So keep that in mind as well. Next up, we got the Hindustani. The Gulam will be upgraded exactly like a militia. Once again, nothing crazy on this guy. Next up, we got the Huns of the Tarkin, exactly like a knight. They do have the unique tech Marauders that lets you make the Tarkins from the stables as well, which is a nice little touch so you can spam those out in the late game and not rely on your castles. 
Next, we got the Incas, which have Slingers and Kamiuks. So the Kamiuk, it's exactly like a Militia, once again, just has that extra range, but it does benefit from the unique tech fabric shields, the Golden Crown, so it gets extra armor. And then moving on to the Slinger, this is a really interesting one. Slinger benefits from the exact upgrades that an Archer would. So it benefits from Fletching all the way to Bracer, and then from all the Archer armor from the Blacksmith. And then moving on to the University, it also benefits from Ballistics and Chemistry. So the Slinger is basically a hand cannon here that also benefits from Ballistics, which is really huge if you think about it chemistry gives plus one attack for the slinger so it's exactly like an archer except its functionality it kind of works like hand cannoneer with ballistics that's a good way to think about it slinger will also benefit from the unique tech andean sling in castellage the silver crown making it get a plus one attack and no minimum range which is really solid Next up, we got the Italians. Now for the Condottiero, it's exactly like a Militia, once again, but you do get the unique tech Pavis that will give it plus one armor for both uh, melee and pierce armor. And then you have the Genovese crossbow, which is exactly like an archer and also benefits from the Pavis. So pretty straightforward with the Italians. Make sure to pick up that silver crown to buff all their units, pretty much. Uh, it is worth mentioning as well that the Condottiero resists gunpowder. So against Hemkin and Nier, it's going to be a decent unit, even though Hemkin and Nier and Slingers are supposed to counter infantry. Condottiero kind of dodged a little bit of that damage. Next up, we got the Japanese Samurai. We all love the Samurai, but it's really not that unique. It is exactly like a militia as far as how you upgrade it. So nothing too special to say here about the Japanese. Shout out Spirit of the Law though, always. Then we got Khmer with the Ballista Elephant. This is another very interesting one. So the Ballista Elephant counts as an elephant slash siege unit. Again, a kind of a hybrid. So it counts as an elephant in the sense that it benefits from the armor of the cavalry from the blacksmith, but it does not benefit from the attack of a cavalry from the blacksmith. That's where the siege part comes in. You go to the university and you upgrade siege engineers and chemistry to give it plus one attack from chemistry and then plus one range and extra damage from siege engineers. Now, as far as the ballistics goes for the Ballista Elephant, ballistics does not work for it. So it kind of functions functions like a scorpion where you don't get ballistics and it does pass through damage. Now for the ballista elephant, you get the double crossbow, which makes it fire two projectiles, but the second projectile does less damage. It's not like you get the same damage for both. The second projectile does like one damage across the board. So it's a little bit of extra firepower, but nothing too crazy. It also takes bonus damage from halbs like an elephant would. And it also unfortunately takes bonus damage from a siege onager like uh, other siege weapons would. So ballista elephant does have like the, the worst of both worlds of elephants and siege in a way. Next up, we got the War Wagon. This is upgraded kind of like a cavalry archer, actually exactly like a cavalry archer, fletching through bracer, all the armor that you get for free with the Koreans and the blacksmith anyways. And then it also benefits from husbandry. You don't get bloodlines, it would if you did. And it also benefits from thumb ring from the range. So it's exactly like a cav archer. Next up, we got the Lithuanians with the Lightus. The Lightus is a unit that is upgraded exactly like the Knight. Uh, and keep in mind, it has the special property to ignore armor. So any attack you get on the Lightus will always hit straight through to your opponent. No armor will reduce that at all. Next, we got the Magyar, so the Magyar Hussar. The Magyar Hussar is upgraded exactly like a knight or a light cap would be. The one thing to keep in mind is the unique tech, which makes the Corvinian Army, sorry, which is called Corvinian Army, which makes the Magyar Hussar cost no gold, and instead it replaces its gold cost by additional food costs. So pretty interesting there. And the uh, last thing that's worth mentioning, the Magyar Hussar also has a bonus against Siege. So this bonus damage against Siege, making it excellent at sniping Trebs and Bomber Cannons. Next up, we got the Malay. Malay, you know, using the Karambit Warriors unique unit and is upgraded exactly like a militia would. But in addition to just like a standard infantry, it counts as half a population. So instead of one Karambit equals one pop, one Karambit equals half a pop. And so therefore two Karambits equals one pop. As far as I know, though, you can only still garrison 20 into a transport ship. It's not like you can garrison 40. So listen, it's, a, it's half pop here, but one pop there. I'm not, uh, I'm kind of getting scammed, if you know what I mean. Next up, we've got the Malians. The Malians have the Cabeto, which is upgraded like a throwing axeman would be. So it's an infantry unit from the blacksmith and also squires and arson like an infantry from the barracks. Interesting thing with the Cabetos though, is that similar to the throwing axeman, even though it's a range unit, it does not benefit from ballistics. It does not benefit from chemistry. It is an infantry and not an archer unit. Next, we've got the Mayans and they've got the plumed archer. This is upgraded exactly like an arbalest. Next, we got the Mongols with the Mangadai, upgraded exactly like a Cav Archer. Mangadai does have a bonus damage against Siege, which is worth mentioning here, and it's probably its best characteristic, making it shred Siege Ram and Siege Onager and all that kind of stuff, letting it be a really, really good unit that's sniping Trebs even in late game. So Mangadai, super solid, upgraded exactly like a Cav Archer. Next, we got the Persian with the Elephant. So the War Elephant, the OG War Elephant here, is upgraded exactly like a Cavalry, like a Knight's armor and attack from the Blacksmith. And then as far as itself, yeah, it just takes bonus damage from Halbs, like an insane amount of bonus damage from Halbs. You have to watch out for it getting converted. But other, otherwise, it's upgraded exactly like a Knight and it's pretty straightforward. 
Then we got the Obich, upgraded exactly like a militia. So you got the armor, the attack from the blacksmith, and then squires and arson from the barracks. Nothing too special there as far as upgrades, but the Obich does have a nice little bonus there where it shreds armor uh, as it attacks an opponent. And this counts for shredding melee armor and ranged armor. So it's a really important tool, especially if you got Obich with Arbalest behind you. If the Obich are hitting the enemy units, it reduces their Pierce armor, letting the Arbalest in the back line do more damage. So it's a very deadly combination. Next up, we got the Portuguese with the organ gun. Now, the organ gun is like a hybrid between a gunpowder and a siege unit. It's a siege unit in the sense that it benefits from the siege engineer tech from the university, and it does not benefit from any blacksmith upgrade whatsoever. It also cannot garrison, and it is repaired with a villager and not healed by a monk. So very interesting. The only way to have a garrison organ gun is to put it directly from the castle inside the castle. If you bring it out, it cannot garrison back. It is a siege unit and uh, definitely an interesting part, interesting mechanic for the organ gun. And then on top of that, the only upgrade you need is the Archibus, the Golden Crown, making them a bit more accurate. And this basically acts as ballistics for gunpowder units. Next up, we got the Romans. They've got the Centurion, which is exactly like a knight. Uh, nothing too crazy there. And then they've also got the Legionary, which is like a champion. It replaces the champion and 200 swordsman upgrade. So, and that's upgraded exactly like a champion would. They don't get supplies nor gambesons though. And then you also have the unique tech, the Golden Crown, that makes their militia line, light line, and Centurions train faster and receive a charge attack. The charge attack gives them plus five attack, and it functions exactly like a Custodia charge attack would, except Custodia gets way more than just plus five. It's also worth mentioning that the Legionaries get a small boost of attack attack speed and uh, movement speed if they've got a centurion nearby. So this is another hidden mechanic that is kind of a link between those two unique units. Uh, next up, we've got the Saracens with the Mameluke. Now, the Mameluke is similar to a camel uh, in the sense that, or a knight, in the sense that it takes attack and cavalry armor from the blacksmith. And it has three range, but it does not count it by skirmishers. Skirmishers will do no bonus damage against the Mameluke because it does not count as a cavalry archer at all. It simply counts as a camel. So it takes bonus damage from Halb, for example. It takes a little bit of bonus damage from camels, but it doesn't take as much bonus damage as a knight would. So it counts as a camel and it does not benefit from ballistics. It does not benefit from chemistry as well. Next up, we got the Sicilians with the Sergeant. Sergeant benefits exactly from upgrades like a militia would, but the unique thing about the Sergeant is that it upgrades itself from age to age, like an Eagle would. Even if you don't upgrade it to Elite, the Feudal Sergeant is way weaker than the Castle Sergeant. So as you age up, the Sergeant gets natural upgrades, natural stats built in, and then it can also be upgraded like a militia from the Blacksmith, etc. It is worth mentioning that the first Crusade tech lets you go above 200 pop. So if you do that, when you're at 200 pop, you can go to 225, and that's very nice with the Sergeant. It also gives you more resistance to conversions and that upgrade is very similar to how faith would help you against conversions of a regular sieve. Next up, we got the Slavs with the Boyars, and the Boyars are upgraded exactly like a knight. Keep in mind, they have really high armor, which is great for most cases, but it doesn't really help them against something like a Halberdier, because Halberdier gets most of its damage from its bonus damage, which is not negated by the armor. Moving on to the Spanish, we got the Conquistador, which is upgraded like kind of like a gunpowder slash a cab archer. So it's a gunpowder in the sense that fletching to Bracer does not affect it, and Ballistics does not affect it, nor does Chemistry. What does affect it though, is the Archer Armor from the Blacksmith. So that's kind of how it acts as a Cav Archer. And then when it comes to bonus damage, Conquistador is taking extra damage from Skirmishers and extra damage from Halberdier, similar to how a Cav Archer would. So the Conquistador is a hybrid between a Cav Archer and a Gunpowder unit, and uh, it doesn't get Parthen Tactics, or Spanish do not get Parthen Tactics, so you don't have to worry about that. Thumbring does not affect the Conquistador. Next up, we got the Tatars with the Keshek. Keshek is upgraded exactly like a knight, and when it's attacking units, it benefits from uh, getting a little bit of gold back as it fights. It does not benefit from the silk armor upgrade that's only for light calf step lancers and cav archers, so it's completely exempt from that. But the Keshek in general is upgraded exactly like a knight in the blacksmith. Also, it's worth noting that the gold trickle you get when fighting does not apply when hitting buildings. Next up, we got the Teutons unique units, and that is going to be the Teutonic Knight, the fan favorites. Teutonic Knight is upgraded exactly like you'd upgrade a militia, so nothing too special here. Next up, we got the Turks with the Janissary. This is exactly like a hand cannoneer. They do not benefit from fletching through Bracer, but they benefit from the Archer Armor upgrades from the Blacksmith, and they don't benefit from Ballistics nor Chemistry. Even though you get Chemistry for free, the Janissary will not benefit from it whatsoever. Also, the Janissary do not benefit from Thumb Ring, similar to how a hand cannoneer will not benefit from that upgrade either. Next up, we got the Vietnamese with the Rathen Archer. It's upgraded exactly like you'd upgrade a regular archer, and it just has high pierce armor. 
Last but not least, we got the Vikings. The Vikings uh, have the Berserker, and this unit is upgraded exactly like how you'd upgrade a Militia. And it also benefits from the Chieftain's unique tech, which gives them bonus damage against Cavalry and lets them generate gold when killing Vils, Trade Units, and Monks. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it was helpful, and I hope it's going to be a good tool and a good resource for the AoE community as a whole. So if you ever see someone struggling with this kind of concept in their Reddit forums, uh, in Discords, and Twitch chat, just refer them to this video, and they can navigate through it. We're going to put timestamps everywhere so they can find exactly, you know, which unit they're having trouble with and they can get the information that way if i did make a mistake at all point it out in the comments below and i'll make sure to pin it so that people can correct me if i made any mistakes i went through 45 sieves and it's natural that there might be a mistake in there uh, thanks so much for watching guys make sure to like comment subscribe if you did enjoy and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace